I'm Chiwa James. I'm enrolled with the Modoc tribe of Oklahoma, but I was born on the Klamath Reservation in Oregon, which of course was where the Modocs were put, where they were placed by treaty along with the Klamath and the Yuhuskan Band of Paiutes. I'm descended from Mashetko, uh, who became known as Shack Nasty Jim. Mm, there's a lot of debate about that name. My father says it's a corruption of his Indian name, but legend, of course, is always more colorful. And it says that his mother was a poor housekeeper, and thus he was named Shack Nasty Jim. And you know, that's a hard one to live up to. <laughs> but uh, at any rate, my grandfather, who became known back in Oklahoma Indian Territory because the Modocs in 1873, after the Modoc War, were sent as exiles uh, back to what then was Oklahoma Indian Territory. Today, it's in northeastern Oklahoma, right near the town of Miami, Oklahoma. And uh, his name changed, as all of the Modocs did, and he became known, and this is my grandfather now, as Clark James, because he took the Shack Nasty Jim, he dropped the Shack Nasty, thank goodness, and took the Jim and elongated it to James, thus my last name of James. Shack Nasty was best known as the finest marksman uh, of the Modoc war on the Modoc side. He was deadly with a rifle and that comes from the fact that he was equally deadly with a bow and arrow. He was known as the great archer uh, of Modoc history. He really was. Chiwa, the full name is Chihuahua and that was given to me by my great great Aunt Jenny who was the last survivor of the Modoc war. She died in 1950 at the age of 91. I think when we look at the causes of the Modoc War, the feeling has always been that the settlers are in back of it. In other words, they wanted the land, it was Modoc land, and so they wanted to eliminate the Modocs from that land. The reality is, I believe, that it was much, much more complex than that. First of all, there were a lot of examples of very successful assimilation among the Modocs. Keep in mind, there was no such thing as a Modoc tribe. It did not exist. They were not a, a, they were not a, a com combined group of people. They, each tribe, I mean, each band was autonomous. Each band had their own leadership. They made their own decisions. Uh, and incidentally, they did everything by vote of the people. One of America's first, maybe their greatest democracy. And those are, everything was, everything was built around consensus. It was just wonderful. So when you analyze the Modoc War, you have to realize that it was not a unified tribe. It was all these bands who came together in time of war. So when we look at the causes of the war and we look at that assimilation, the Hot Creeks, which is my band, the Hot Creeks were the band uh, far to the west of what was the ancestral Modoc land, right around the foothills of Mount Shasta, to, in what today is the town of Wairika. That was where the Hot Creeks lived. They had assimilated by 1873 uh, in a very advanced way. So the assimilation was happening, it, and, and I feel that if, if if things had been allowed to just continue the way they could have normally continued, the war probably never would have happened.